So I will start with a hands-on demonstration of the eCognition developer. And I have opened up a little project with a very small subset of data. And on the left-hand side, you can see the um, image with different layers displayed. I can display the different layers which are loaded here. So in this example, you have the red, green, the blue channel, the near-infrared channel, and an elevation layer. You can define how to actually display these and flip through the different channels. And as you can see, the intensity of the um, LiDAR data set contains holes. We will talk about this a little bit later in Juan's talk when he will show how LiDAR data actually is loaded in eCognition and how it's then represented as a um, Rust data set. On the right-hand side, you see the most important window, which is the process tree. And the process tree contains all the steps and all the different components necessary to actually analyze your image data. So I can extend some of these areas here. So you can see that the process is comprised of different individual steps. The process environment, let's say, is a graphical driven environment. So if I open up one of these steps, you see the contents and the details of each process. So in this case, we have the algorithm, which is a LiDAR file converter. It is used to extract a raster layer from a LiDAR point cloud file. And on the right-hand side, you can also always define the settings for each algorithm. So in this case, it defines how the LiDAR data set is represented as a LiDAR um, or as a raster data set. And this way, eCognition allows you to bring in um, different aspects of a LiDAR data set and then continue to analyze this data set. If I open up the selection here, you can see eCognition offers you a pretty vast um, variety of different algorithms. You can do um, segmentation, which is sort of the, the core function of eCognition and the, the one function which is most known. Um, but apart from simply doing segmentation, you can of course also classify objects. You can do advanced classification. You can use um, variables in your processing. You can reshape objects um, in, in various ways. You can also use um, um, separated objects to link them, for example. You can um, split up your, your project in different maps and, and focus in certain areas. Uh, one very important aspect, especially when working with LiDAR, is also image layer operations in which you can actually filter your data and this way highlight certain areas, which then again help to, to, to run your segmentation and a lot of additional things that you, that you can, can do in this environment. So as you can see, um, eCognition essentially is a, um, let's say, a graphical programming environment. And once you have picked an algorithm, you can define where to, to apply the algorithm, whether to do on the actual pixel level or in a certain level on a certain uh, number of objects. And then for each algorithm, on the right-hand side, you define the parameters of the algorithm. So in this example here, you can see we have different steps in this process. First, creating the necessary raster layers. Once those are created, buildings are identified, and then trees. And finally, buildings and trees are generalized. Since, as you can see, such a rule set is pretty complex, and um, to, to actually handle such a rule set, you need some sort of um, knowledge and, let's say, um, knowledge about their software and, and ability. Um, it also means that not everyone um, can use this sort of rule set and therefore we have developed the, the software eCognition architect which allows you to essentially hide the complexity of such a rule set and open it up to, um, to users who are, who are not rule set developers, let's say. Um, one qu quick advice in between. Um, if any of you has questions, please wait until the end of the presentation. We will have a Q&A session, which um, if it is set up as the last time, uh, sim similar to the last time, we'll have probably like uh, 15 minutes to 20 minutes questions. So we will work hard to, to answer all the questions which are, which are asked. So getting back to topic, once you have such a rule set generated, you can apply it to a lot of data. And of course, you can also um, make it available to eCognition architects so that people who are not rule set developers can use these um, 
these rule sets and I'm quickly switching over to the architect mode just to give you an impression how this looks and it, even though since I'm still in developer I can change to the architect mode since developer is the environment in which you actually develop an architect application. So here you can see how an ecognition architect application looks. The different steps that I'm showing here are linked to different steps in the rule set and instead of executing the rule set I can simply just click one button and I can also use sliders for example to influence certain behavior of the rule set. So in this example um, the user is guided through different steps of the rule set. First of all creating different raster layers which are used to do the analysis and data and then to do classification and generalization. Right now I'm, I'm running the different steps which create the, the raster layers just so you see how rules uh, how, how results of such rules that also look. Quickly switching again to the um, layer mixing information and now you can see um, several channels have been added and in this case we created a normalized DSM first return and last return LiDAR intensity, uh, sorry, LiDAR elevation. And now I'm using this information to classify buildings. You can define the NVI influence on the building and the elevation. So if you have an area where you have very low elevated buildings, you can use this parameter to change the settings. In the second step, I can classify trees. It's a, it's a similar setup. Also, you use the NVI and the elevation threshold to define how the trees are classified. And finally, you can actually generalize the, the objects in your data. So eCognition also allows or offers functionality to move away from, let's say, pixel objects, and it allows you to create nice and smooth outlines for the objects you're looking at. In this case, the buildings are squared up so that each building has like 90 degree angles. Um, on the tree generalization, it's a, it's a similar approach. The trees are sort of smooth so that the outlines look more like natural vegetation. If any of these steps has been performed in a, in a too strong mode, let's say, you can hit the undo button and execute the process in a, in a different setting, for example. And then you will see the, the impact directly in your result here. Um, you can save such a rule set or such a such an application and then apply it to, to a multitude of images in a batch processing mode using eCognition server. Once you have processed the data, you can also flip to a QA or quality check um, step. In this case, zooming in here, you have all the different objects which are detected in a um, outline mode and you can use the, the little thumbnails to flip from one object to the next. You can either accept the object or you can decline it or you can rotate it or flag it for review. So this way you also have a very efficient setup in which you can do um, let's say semi-automatic workflows and you can analyze or, or manually review the data very efficiently. 